we've all spoken about this new normal uh, about how digital transformation is is now happening at a more rapid pace than ever driven by the pandemic and you know there's there's typically a bunch of these quotes that we've always seen which is how global ceos are trying to improve customer experience um, you know people every ceo thinks that you know they need to build a lot of new digital capabilities but you know here is something that i saw about 6 months back uh, which which i think is the best way to describe it and i think uh, you would have seen this meme somewhere before which is you know who led the digital transformation of your company ceo cto well guess what it was covid 19 uh, driven by the pandemic uh, it fueled a need to absolutely uh, you know not not be like a digital is another part of our company but more more like digital is our company um and this is a staggering statistic um you know in the us in the first quarter of 2020 uh, which is around the time frame of when the pandemic first hit e-commerce grew as much in 3 months as it, it had grown in the past 10 years so literally digital spending um in 90 days grew as much as the past 10 years that was just a sh- this is a staggering statistic which tells you uh, to sort of the degree uh, to which uh, um, you know the entire uh, uh, transformation has been happening and how customers today uh, are basically just on digital platforms uh, and on digital mediums uh, to be able to transact and 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 interact with brands so all of this has made what we call customer experience critical right so let's say we all know that there is some um, uh, so there's something about going to a store there's something about going to a mall that you cannot replicate digitally no matter how hard you try how hard you try so as a result right um, in this new world of where maximum business for you comes through a digital touch point it becomes very important to think about how the entire customer experience looks like. You know, here are some statistics again that we've been observing through various reports. Uh, um, you know, where sixty percent of shoppers did not complete a purchase on a digital channel because they had a poor customer experience. Either the UI wasn't correct, the UX wasn't correct, or they did not get you know help on time. For example, eighty-three percent of shoppers needed some form of support, but even while that didn't happen. Um, you know, they they actually ended up dropping off from the conversion funnel. And what we've seen is that the companies that truly focus on getting the entire customer experience right are the ones um, that really can win big. Like they have the potential of of really winning in this new uh, world of being uh, tech and digital first. Um, and any ninety three percent of customers come back and make a repeat purchase with a brand that provides an absolutely great service. Uh, And, you know, for me, what was interesting was that um, close to 70% of people generally are willing to pay more and will pay more um, if you provide a better customer experience while they're trying to purchase digitally. So um, we've seen a lot of this, right? Personalization, loyalty badges, retargeting campaigns. These... These are absolutely all great tactics to win the attention of uh, um, of your visitors and your customers, but everybody's doing it, right? So every single person and every single brand and every single business is thinking about all these aspects and how do I build more personalization? How do I build better royalty and, and so on and, and so forth. Um, but what we've been thinking about more and more is that what do brands need to do to operate and succeed in this new normal? and the f- emphasis here on succeed, how can they do things that they will genuinely be successful at? And there are three broad themes uh, that we believe are going to be pervasive uh, in this new world uh, of customer experience driven through artificial intelligence. Conversational AI is number one, which is basically the business that Haptic is in. And when I say conversational AI, this could mean, mean many different things. But primarily, basically what this means is chatbots and voice tech and now chatbots um, now given the world in which everybody is transacting uh, digitally first they also want the customer service to be digital first they also want the idea that um, you know you can uh, essentially um, um, very quickly speak to 
an AI driven assistant or chat with an AI driven assistant and get help instantly. Um, we have now gotten to the point when 90% of businesses are reporting faster complaint resolution with bots. And what's even more exciting in the coming year is the, the impact that voice driven AI is going to have on call centers. Today, you know, when you're trying to uh, go through an IVR menu, you have to press one, then press three, then press seven, then press nine to eventually find a human agent. What if you could skip all of that by simply saying, connect me, I need help with my credit card bill, right? That is super powerful. And that is, again, something that will significantly improve the customer experience in a world where in-person support will become a lot, lot lesser. WhatsApp commerce. Um, so a lot of you, I'm guessing over the last year have seen a lot of the traction that people, businesses have been having on WhatsApp. So the idea that uh, as a business, right, I can now engage with my customers on WhatsApp uh, and be able to not only service them, but also actually enable transactions for them. And this way we believe has gotten on, gotten on to the extent where our belief is that every single brand in the emerging markets, uh, which includes India, Brazil, Southeast Asia, Africa, um, parts of Asia, uh, will enable a WhatsApp channel to enable commerce and communication with their customers. So um, WhatsApp, I always have always been saying this for a long time now that, you know, just like you had a website uh, where you build something and your customers engage, you have a um, app where again, you know, you give a touch point for your customers to interact. Now you're going to be able to give them something like a WhatsApp channel where customers will be directly be able to come and interact with you as a business. Um, and this is what some of this will look like. Some of this is live and some of this is coming up as you must have noticed recently, WhatsApp went live with buttons and interactive menus. So now it becomes a lot easier to engage with a business instead of trying to uh, you know, go through complicated uh, number driven menus. You can see over here that this is a menu button where you can select a particular thing that you want uh, the customers to uh, sort of uh, engage with. Um, and uh, um, where, uh, you know, you can, you're now able to essentially uh, do business and, and actually transact also on, uh, on WhatsApp. So this again, we think will become a huge trend in the times to come. Um, and every single brand and every single business, small or large, will have, um, you know, a, a communication channel like this. Um, and then finally, uh, voice assistant. So another area that we think is going to pick up tremendously over the next uh, uh, few uh, uh, months is uh, we think that there is an increased appetite for voice assistants driven through convenience, that it's a lot easier, as well as vernacular. The fact that voice makes uh, speaking in my native language a lot more convenient, um, you know, versus having to, um, you know, use use a potentially other other medium to do that. Um, so convenience, accessibility, and the human touch are three things that voice assistants provide beyond anything else. The estimate is by the end of two thousand twenty four, uh, the number of digital voice agents will be about eight point four billion units, um, which will be more than the world's population. So essentially, each person will have access to more than one voice assistant, which can be a combination of something that's on your phone, as well as let's say a device like a smart speaker. You know, one of the other things we're seeing over here is voice based product discovery, right? Like text based search or things like that. Um, you need to do a lot of filters. You need to search through a bunch of different things versus on voice. You could simply say, show me a red shirt checks under $60. Um, and it could very quickly show that result for you versus having to go through a cumbersome search menu. So we also think that the entire voice-based uh, discovery and search is going to become huge in times to come. So the best way for me to summarize and what I always uh, tell our team internally at Haptic and, and even otherwise is that, um, you know, for us, it's, it's, it's like 1913 and we are building cars. 1913 was the year in which... Uh, Ford put out their first factory line to manufacture cars. And now more than a hundred years later, uh, you can see the impact that the automobile sector has had on everything in our economy. So we think that this is with, with the acceleration due to uh, COVID and digital and everything. Um, the idea of AI driven customer experience is going to be extremely real for the next hundred years to come. 
and some of the things that are showcased to you are only going to be key things for 2021 but much 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 beyond after that um thank you so much uh, it was it was great uh, um, uh, spending these 15 minutes and and sharing some of these uh, anecdotes uh, with everybody and hope you are safe and be well thank you akrit for the wonderful keynote it was quite insightful uh we are running out of time but we have like two questions we will quickly take that first uh, one would be uh, which sector has made the best use of ai powered chatbots and virtual assistants according to you and why that would be the first question so definitely the uh, digital native e-commerce you know basically the new age companies they've made by far the best use so far of uh, this technology Uh, i think uh, because uh, uh, you know of a uh, 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 combination of uh, reasons but i think mm, the first being that if you think about it uh, you know they are uh, uh, they end up being the early adopters of any technology like they end up being adopters of uh, um, you know new age tech much faster the systems are a little better organized also their customers are right at the digital touch point you know compared to let's say other offline customers so the entire new age sort of startups funded companies unicorns uh, you know e-commerce digital native we've seen them they are finding the most value out of it right now uh, first but now we're also increasingly seeing uh, traditional companies like fintech financial services cpg and so on catch on to it thank you agrit we have another interesting question which is uh, with with digital first digital first being emphasized how will it change the scenario in the next few years um uh, i think now it's no longer digital first i think it's more like digital only uh, i think that uh, um back to my cars example right i mean today saying that i'm on the internet or i buy things online is saying like i drive a car or a scooter or i travel by train or a plane you know um so i don't i don't i think we're out of this notion of digital is another part of our world versus really digital is our world um uh, and we live we live in a time where uh, everything from consuming content to talking to your friends to speaking with family to uh, like i said buying buying things and shopping everything is basically happening driven through uh, internet enabled means so uh, i think you're already in that time i think what's exciting to see is the impact that ai is going to have uh over over some of these uh technologies in times to come 